Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Atiyu Allah, Atiyu Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum. Alhamdulillah, it was a reminder for myself and Abdukul Ajis al Daif, al Miskeen, al Zalim, al Jahad. And but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence, alhamdulillah <coughs> that this immense blessings of the immense month of Shahr Shahban and the lights of Sayyidina Muhammad dressing and blessing the nation. We pray that Allah dress us from the immensity of these lights and the responsibility of carrying that love for Sayyidina Muhammad and perfecting ourselves to be worthy of carrying that love with the tariqahs and the schools of manners and, and good character. Alhamdulillah we talked a lot last week on different subjects. InshaAllah before we would go anymore we can go through some questions and answers and give people a time to, to digest before we keep going on, on more subjects and more subjects inshaAllah. What do we have for, for questions from people say? As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what should we do if we feel an emptiness inside despite doing the spiritual practices and we feel like as if life was a project and we're unable to do it. Hmm. InshaAllah, you know, again you have to balance oneself from <clears throat> not becoming, you know, mentally depressed and mentally straining. There's a, a spiritual reality that when you don't have the yearning for dunya, and you, you go about what you have to do for your dunya and you do your spiritual practices and you, you try to live every day for that moment. That you're not thinking about what's happened in the past and not fearing what's coming for the future and you try your best to enjoy that moment, the, the zikr for that day, the connection for that day and Again not going into things that may not be related to spiritual practices and people become depressed or have depression and then there's all those remedies that we've talked about, about depression and fear of the past. And As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fear of the unknown for the future. InshaAllah we try our best to keep ourselves to be stable and live within the present moment. And if the desire for dunya is going down then alhamdulillah. If there's apprehension about the days of the, the future and things that are coming, then you make your meditation and connection yeah. and salawats and durood inshaAllah to the best of our abilities, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Last week you preached that if we stay a lot around awliya we become lunatics because of their light. How would we know if we are one already? <laughs> No, that's just a, it's an expression that you know anytime you're around the light too much then uh, the light begins to reflect on people. If they do their practices and they keep the discipline of what has been asked by them then alhamdulillah they work within those disciplines and they absorb those lights and practices. But when you stick around these lights and lots of barakahs and the tariqah has immense amounts of barakah 
and people don't keep within their discipline and don't keep within the understandings of the, the logics and the disciplines of the practices, then it leads itself into many different directions and we describe that. We describe the people who use their meditation for dunya purposes, who they want, what they want, the, the properties they want, the things they want, the people they want. But meditation and tafakkur is not at all for that purpose. So anytime you use a spiritual practice for a physical desire, it's all from your nafs. So the connection doesn't even work at that level. So people then believe that they're still in the connection and but they're talking to their nafs. Then Allah which I describe, have you seen those who make their desires their Lord? And Allah is referring that even their desires become their Allah, their illah, that which is Divine to them and they feel that they're submitting to that. So the tariqah has a strong discipline in which you know to keep your connection with the shaykh, visualize the shaykh and this is only for spiritual practices. You connect to feel the light, to do the awrah, to do the oceans of power that they need to enter into the oceans of power and you don't ask your physical, you don't ask your physical concerns, you don't ask for your physical desires from that connection. And you keep with your practices and, and don't go here, don't go there. Imagine them people doing a little bit of tariqah, then mixing with everywhere they go and everything they meet and reading every type of book and put a little bit of this, a little bit of that and that becomes a big formula for danger. They start mixing you know very powerful practices with uh, contaminations. So again you'll get something that's not the tariqah and that's the problem is there's a lot of barakah, a lot of people feel a lot of energies, a lot of the different things and then they believe that they've sort of got it and they can start mixing now other things with it. And that's, that's again the difficulty to keep the discipline, to be nothing, to act as nothing, keep a strong connection with the shaykhs and keep a discipline within that shaykh, don't pass the boundary of those disciplines and alhamdulillah it should be fine. But the problem is when people start to you know go all over the place and imagine, an imaginary sort of uh, world they begin to live in and they begin to communicate less with the shaykh and they're not even telling the shaykh what's happening, what they're thinking and it's all now just transpiring within their mind. And a mind is a very dangerous place to go. So this path is based on the heart and not the mind because the mind is complete, you know, imagination. People can imagine anything they want in their mind and believe that it's happening and believe that that's true. But the tariqah's practice and the way tariqah teaches the muraqabah is to always say, I'm nothing. So you can't visualize yourself as achieving something, you're supposed to be nothing. So that, that is a very sort of a strong discipline if people keep it. If not they feel that they have so much barakah they can transgress and do different things, they don't have to follow Islamic law and, and, and those where the people start to go in, in different directions. And that's where Allah says, you know describes many times that you've taken somebody else as your Lord and Saviour, that somebody can save you from Allah's law. Nobody can save anyone from Allah's laws and Allah's will and Allah's decree. The shaykhs are only supposed to guide people to the will of Allah and what Allah wants for people and never outside of that and never to circumvent that or, or come above or beyond Allah's laws. They're merely servants in which to direct people to the laws of Allah and what Allah wants for His servants and the love for Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam wa In your amazing talk you mentioned Alam al-Qur'an, Khalaq al-Insan, are the lights already inside the student and shaykh unlocks them? Forgive my ignorance beloved Sayyidi Walaykum As salaam, yes inshaAllah. That Allah gives to everyone their understanding that we've already taught you the knowledges. So it's, it's, it's not something people are acquiring, we said many times that your light is an encrypted secret, that you're a, a file from the file of Sayyidina Muhammad like a little chip of light off of an infinite 
chip or disk of realities called Muhammadun Rasulullah So everyone has a secret, every soul has a secret. It was created by and for its secret but the one whom looks outside for the secret will never find it. So then we describe when what reality Allah gave for us in science to understand was the CD. So the CD was you had to take a, a device made from a specific light, it's a reader and then it points it to a disc and retrieves all these knowledges, books and prints and, and media, every type of audio visual media is on a flat disk of light. Nobody understands how they put it on there, even harder to understand how you get it out with the light. And you can't flash a regular flashlight. So what is that reader that reads that disk? Now imagine your disk is your soul where Allah gave to him, Alam al-Qur'an. So the minute he created that light of Muhammad and Rasulullah everyone's light comes from that ocean. So when they take their little chip, whatever reality they have is from the ocean of Muhammad and Rasulullah So then what's the frequency of that light to retrieve those ultimate secrets? It must have the izah might of La ilaha illallah and then have a very specific frequency of light known as Muhammadun Rasulullah So it means only through that ocean of the kalima their frequency and reader can be readjusted. So like a little laser just like for us to have an analogy but most people pointing their laser out and thinking you know they'll read this, read that, read this, read that, read this, read everything so that they can find themselves. But Prophet described who knows himself will know his Lord. So then they begin their tafakkur and their meditation and contemplation with the Naqshbandi way, not their own way because they have to have the presence of the shaykh which was the first question. Otherwise someone just meditating by themselves they become crazy. They imagine, they have uh, all these new age people, they have, oh I have a spirit guide and he's an eagle and it's a bear and they fly and they come and they teach me things and they, they smoke tobacco and blow tobacco <laughs> everywhere <laughs> yeah, because they're just all hallucinating. So it's not about meditating and spirit guides, it's about having a shaykh and you know the shaykh is in front of you to catch you when you're doing wrong and to make sure that your coordinates are correct and you have to have a relationship with the shaykh where you're emailing, communicating. So that you know the shaykh knows you and that you're loyal to the shaykh, you built that loyalty by your service and your dedication, your commitment and everything. You don't have loyalty just by sitting on the, on the couch somewhere being anonymous, it's the service you do that has that loyalty. So you know you're good with the shaykh because you're serving and you're of service. And as a result you built that relationship, now when you're meditating, contemplating and then you're constantly reaching out that, this is the effect that I'm going through, this is the energy that I'm going through and, and this is why the live is so important to give people a, uh, a sense of familiarity that we are in the group, you are a part of our, our student population and that this is the teacher and he's talking to his students so that you're part and almost first party into it. Not so distant fourth party where you don't know if anyone knows you or not. But we're trying to be very familiar with people so they have a sense of, yes, yeah, I, I watch the shaykh, I know the shaykh, I even ask questions to the shaykh so that they can feel that responsibility and feel that uh, relationship. Then they start supporting and, and being of service and we see them, <coughs> they interact. <clears throat> so in their heart of hearts they know that, yes, no, I'm connected with that shaykh and I'm in service to that uh, reality. And I'm building myself and developing myself towards that uh, understanding, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Does partially knowing my nafs means that I partially know my Lord? And if someone entirely knows his nafs, does this result to entirely knowing his Lord, the who? I don't know entirely what that means but 
Can we break for a second? I have to go get something. We break for some salawat. We'll be right back inshaAllah. InshaAllah. InshaAllah bi hurmati Muhammad Mustafa Zir Surat al Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.